There's no visitors allowed here. Not unless I know about it first. I'm not expecting anyone today. I have a meeting with Mr. Cooper. Hi, she's here to see me, John. Hi, I'm David Cooper. Uh, thank you for coming. Like I said, David, I got my orders. I'm not even sure it's okay for you to be here. Yeah, we Much be here It's okay. It's okay, John. Really, it'll be okay. It's a long way up here. What do you mean it won't be long? I thought it was important that you see the place before we talk about business. I'm paid $200 a day. That's a lot of money to shell out to walk around the garden without telling me why. This is where it all began. I'm willing to pay whatever is necessary to go back and start at the beginning. Well, all right. So I used to live here. Really? When? Until I was six. And there was a murder. Someone was murdered here? Yeah. Who was it? Her name was Helen McElwain. She was the wife of Andrew McElwain, a man my father worked for. The Andrew McElwain? Yeah. My father was arrested, tried, and convicted of her murder. He died in prison several years ago. David, if the murder was committed 15 years ago, what is it you want me to do? Just hear me out, please. Miss McElwain's body was found floating in the water right here. She was killed while her daughter Brooke's sixth birthday party was going on. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, for Brooke and for me. We both lost a parent. See, I never really saw my father again after he was arrested. The kid's party was back over there. There were ponies David, and... I don't mean to seem rude. And it's an awful story, but I still don't know what you think I can do. Last week, I was 21. I inherited a small amount of money that my father had put aside for me. And I was given a carton of things that I had when I was a kid. You know, books, toys, things like that. I found this at the bottom of the box. The film taken during the party. I don't think anyone's ever seen it except for me. I want you to look at it. Okay. Let's go. Hi, it's Pearson. A lady came here to meet David Cooper. I told you he'd turn up again. I don't know. No, 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 not a girlfriend. She's a grown-up woman. I tell you, I don't know. But I do know her license number. It's 1GBO 927. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure, I will. Hello, Mom. Ma? It's me, Mom. Meryl, your daughter? No, no, I'm not. I, I don't get in trouble anymore. I just called to say hello. Did you get the projector yet? Mom, maybe if you, uh... Mom, maybe if you came out for a visit, we could talk and you'd see. Hold on a second, Mom. Cassie, not now, please, okay? Okay, okay, no calls. I'm trying to make up with my mother. So far, nothing. Okay. Mom? Mom? Is that Brooke McElwain, the little girl at the head of the table? Yeah. Okay, see, there. See, see the guy with the cake? That's my father. Who else was a suspect? Nobody. See, my father and Mrs. McElwain were having an affair. Who knew that? I don't know. I, I had seen them a couple of times together, but it didn't mean anything. See, when they searched our when they searched our rooms, they found letters from her to him, and they found a gun. Is that Andrew McElwain right there? 
Yeah. David, what did you see on the film that you think could help your father? Nothing. But I saw him. I saw his face for the first time since I was six. And it was a face that I remembered. It was not the face of a man who could kill somebody. David. Look, look, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking that it's just wishful thinking. Yes, right? exactly. Well, I'm willing to take that chance. Look, ever since I was little, I never believed he was guilty. The court said it. The papers said it. My family said it. I knew that they were wrong. I don't know why, I just knew that they were wrong. Of course you did. He was your father. I guess. But see, but then when I started to grow up, these doubts began to creep into, come into my mind. I mean, for a while there, I thought that he actually did it. And when you saw him on the film? It was like, it was like this incredible sense of relief because I knew that what I had known all along as a child was true. How? Look, look, I'm 21 years old now. I, I'm moving away from here. I have, I have a job waiting for me in the East and I have a girl that I want to marry. I want to be able to bring my father back into my life. I want his name cleared. For me, for his grandchildren, and for him. David, what if it turns out that you're wrong? That he was guilty? I don't think it'll turn out that way, but if it does, at least it'll be settled once and for all. Either way, I'll be able to live with it. Well, let me think about it, and I'll look at the film a few more times. Thank you. Kid, I get the message. I'm working as fast as I can. Look, lady, I got a term paper due tomorrow. You should have thought of that sooner. Oh, he over there. Oh. I cannot believe this is the only machine in the library. Think cutbacks. Look, lady, come on, you're not on a deadline. No, but my boss is. She needs the information today. Hey, you're gonna get some Barbara tape. I don't believe it. No more articles. Great. Then I can use the machine. You're hurting me. It's good for you. You know, I can't understand it. A big shot's wife gets murdered. The papers hardly mention it. Nothing about the funeral. No interviews. There's not one picture of anyone in the entire family. And the second day of the investigation, the whole case was dead as a doornail. The trial didn't even make the front pages. Manipulation of the media. Huh? Manipulation of the media. Shh. Look, lady, freedom of the press is a myth. In the power structures that exist today, big corporations control the media. Generally, I'd say you were nuts. Specifically, you might be onto something. It's all yours. Power to the people. Whatever. Mr. Blunt? Yeah. Get in, please. You seem very ill at ease, Mr. Blunt. Yeah, well... I imagine you could use a drink. Uh, yeah, thanks. <clears throat> I think you misunderstood. I was commenting on your condition, not playing the host. Uh, I'm sorry. Look, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Galwain, uh, I'm a busy man. I can't afford to be joyriding all day. I know precisely what you can afford. I need some information. I'll pay you a flat rate for it. I work day by day, and I get my expenses. I'm sure you do. I'm prepared to pay you $1,000. I could make an exception. What do you need? I need some information about a woman in your profession. Cassie Holland? I'm impressed. Uh, don't get carried away. She's the only broad in my profession. I'd like whatever you can find out about her. Mm -hmm. When can I expect to hear from you? How about now? She used to be on the force. She knows her work well. She's great looking. Doesn't drink much to speak of. She bought her an agency from uh, some uh, hairbag named Shacklefoot. He's retired, but he still hangs around the office. What's her financial situation? Closer to mine than yours, by a lot. Oh, yeah, she used to be married to uh, Michael Holland, the DA. 
Pull over, Charles. We'll let Mr. Blunt out. That's it? You'll be hearing from me. Could you tell me about when? When Miss Holland offers me no other alternative. All right. I'm sorry, traffic was the pit. It's okay. Let's get out of here. Get out? I just got here. Out? It costs more for soup and salad in this place than I pay for my apartment in I a month. I told you. It's my treat. Your treat? <laughs> what are you going to pick my brain about tonight, my little chickadee? You're so cynical. You try to be nice to a friend and... Oh, your dirt here are great. Come on, I'm starving. Don't miss this hot shrimp. It's out of this world. Shrimps give me hives. Jack, what do you know about Andrew McElwain? Oh, try to do something nice for a friend, huh, kid? Try an oyster. It may improve your disposition. Well, they will certainly improve my nightlife. Why do you ask me about Andrew McElwain? Pray new tell. client, David Cooper. There's a connection to Andrew McElwain. Cooper, Cooper McElwain. The combination rings a bell. Mm -hmm. But I can't get it. David Cooper's father is Alfred Cooper. Got it. The guy that shot McElwain's wife. Well, there may be a question about that. Thank you. There may be some question in your mind and your clients, nobody else's. It was an open and shut case. So if you're thinking about taking on McElwain, forget it. He can't be gotten to. Anyone can be, eventually. Tell me what you know about the family, okay? Well, the mother you already know about. And um, there was a daughter, Brooke. She wrapped her car around a tree when she was about 16. They kept it very quiet. Anyone you know ever work for him? Yeah. Me. You? It won't help, though. It won't help. I never knew less about anybody in my whole life. He is a total enigma. He never keeps anybody around more than a couple of months. And once he hires you, you never see him again. I lasted about three months. Got paid to the penny, but no going away party. Need someone who was around at the time of the shooting. Well, I'm sorry, kiddo, to make you spend all your money on this great food, but... Wait a minute. There was a woman. Perfect. Remember who? Yeah. Uh, a Tracy Troy. Uh, Tracy, Lacey... Lacey Troy, known as McElwain's main Tootsie. And good Tootsies are hard to come by. So maybe he kept her around. You may have just sung for your supper. Waiter, waiter, would you bring my fabulous friend a drink? A oh, waiter. Champagne. <laughs> Hello? Uh, yeah, this is David Cooper. I was... I was just checking in. I was wondering if, if you found anything. Only that the day started at 5.20. Listen, David, I know you're anxious, but yesterday was only the first day of our life together. Give me a break. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I won't, it won't happen again. No, oh, it's okay. Listen, as long as I got you, do you happen to know who shot the birthday film? Kenneth McElwain. Yeah, he's a nephew. Well, that was fast. Well, I remember because I never liked him. Why? Uh, that I don't remember. I... Uh, probably better off. Listen, uh, is it okay that that I 
Do you mind if I call in and check in like this? I mean, at your office. Of course not, but just remember, my day starts officially at 9 a.m. Don't forget. Bye. Somebody's handled this stuff with kid gloves. It's led a real easy life. In the bottom of a box for the last 15 years. That's about it. Except in the past few days, it's made maybe 10 trips through a projector. 12 tops. What about editing? Not a sign. What he shot is what you got. It's the original neg, too. All handheld. No tripod for this guy. <clears throat> well, it's a real professional job. Nothing out of focus. Whoever did it knew what he was doing. The guy who shot it was a guest at the party, a relative by the name of Kenneth McElwain. <laughs> Which part is the joke? Kenneth McElwain. Or Kenny, K-E-N-N-I. Wait a minute. Did he shoot this while he was still teaching kids photography? Or was he already in the porno business? Porno business? You bet. Started in the mid-60s and is still going strong. David, you have real good instincts. David? I knew you never really cared. Eddie's the name. Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. Good night. Good night. No, give me a junior. That's it. Now, now bring it to the left just a little bit. And open the door. Crap. Just a little more. Ho, oh, oh, ho, right there. You got it. That's it. Please. I want to walk through for camera. What have you got? Do you mind joining the others? Five, two, five, three, like children. Time is money. Now, Miss Holland, we can talk while they run through the scene. You said you wanted to ask me some questions. I, uh, I muddled on whoa, whoa. which paper you say you're from. I'm not a reporter. I'm a private investigator. Uh, another runaway, I presume. I do not hire minors. I have never hired minors. I will never hire minors. Well, I'm very glad of that, but that's not why I'm here. Brooke McElwain's sixth birthday, August 20th, 1967. Where did you get that? David Cooper. David? David is 21 years old now. He thinks this film will show that his father didn't kill your cousin, Helen McElwain. Nonsense. Sheer nonsense. What seems to be nonsense to me is that no one else was ever suspected. A man like Andrew McElwain has to have enemies, people who have a grudge, those who envy him. Well, of course he does. But in that matter, my dear, it was cut and dry. The butler did it. You must have been questioned by the police. Endlessly. And I accounted for every minute of my day. And for... for everyone else's. Whose? Specifically? It doesn't matter. Once they found the gun in Alfred's rooms, it was all over. I was told you taught photography in a private school before you opened this business. So? A person's entitled to upgrade his career? Absolutely. How long have you been here? I opened the studio in 1968. And it's shown a profit every year since. I have to hand it to you. Accomplishing this much on a teacher's salary, you must have really saved your pennies. Or were you lucky enough to find a rich patron? Get out, Miss Holland. But first, my film, please. I don't think so. It's my property. As they say, possession is nine-tenths of the law. I want that film. Look at it this way. If you don't have it, you won't have to rake up the terrible memories of that tragic day. And if you can't bear to be without it, why don't you report me to the police and they can rake up the memories. Okay, quiet, boys and girls. We've got a rehearsal. Mike, she took her book with her. No, she doesn't discuss her personal life with me. <laughs> no matter how I try. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your ex. As soon as I see her, Mike, absolutely. By all means, bye. Am I going someplace? No, but my mother is. I'm sending her a ticket so she can come visit. How are you paying for it? The agency is advancing me funds against my future salary, okay? No, Meryl, not okay. It's important. I have to confront her. 
Do it by phone. Collect. If this is it for messages, I can call it a day. Wait. Don't move. This you won't believe. Beautiful. Mm. I resisted temptation. I didn't even read the card. Bye. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll tackle you if I have to. My driver will pick you up at five for drinks. Please don't disappoint me, Andrew McElwain. I don't think you should go alone. I'll just go home and fluff up. No, I'll just go home and fluff up. You lock up. Bye. Wear the red. Here. It's flattering to be asked, but why me? At the risk of being labeled sexist, it's a suitable job for a woman. And you have an excellent reputation. Who shall I thank? It's my policy never to reveal my sources. It's mine, too. I'd be hiring you to check out a number of serious complaints about sexual harassment that's been coming back to me from one of my subsidiary companies. That particular company office is located in Oakland. Oh, I see. I think a month up there might be about what you'd need. And uh, the sooner you get started, the better. I'm surprised your sources didn't tell you I'm not available. I'm working for David Cooper. They did. David was an appealing child. I'm sure he's grown into a charming man. I'm sure also that his uh, quest for something that might clear his father's name must have intrigued you. Your sources are very thorough. Miss Holland, if I were David's age, I'd probably do the same thing. But frankly, you'll be doing him a favor if you back out of the job. Alfred Cooper did kill my wife. David is prepared for that possibility. And I'm committed to him. I can't back out now. I'm prepared to make you a very generous offer. Oh, please don't tell me what it is. I'm sorry, but maybe some other time. But while I'm here, I'd like to ask it's you It's taken about me years me. to recover from my wife's death. I will not reopen that wound to satisfy a boy's harebrained notions. His father was an unprincipled lecher and murderer. There's nothing else to be said. I've had dinner prepared. Please join me. I'd like a chance to change your mind. I'm sorry. I'd rather not be tempted. I'm sorry to hear that. I think we'd enjoy each other. I, um, I like your style. <sighs> Yours isn't bad. Can your driver take me home now? Oh, yes, he's at your disposal. And uh, should you change your mind, so am I. Thank you. Right. You may come out now. How'd you make out? Occasionally, it's in my interest to take on a failure, Mr. Blunt, and you've just gotten lucky. Look, Mr. McElwain, I don't have to take that from you. Nonsense. We both know you have to take whatever you can get. Your business is falling apart, your personal life is disintegrated. What you need most is a benefactor. And now you have one. There's a lifetime employment contract starting at $25,000 a year available to you starting today. What do I have to do for it? First, are you interested in the offer? You know I'm interested. All right, then. The lady we've already discussed, Cassie Holland. I want her watched. I want to know everything she does. I also want a box of 16 millimeter film she has in her possession. How do you propose that I get this film? I'm not interested in how you do your job, but so long as you get it done. Buzz off, Nikki. You're disturbing my concentration. If and when Andrew cuts me loose, 
I'm going to become the Minnesota Fats of the pinball machine. Mr. McElwain didn't impress me as someone who would ever cut loose of an employee. A person could do worse. There are other options. I only know of one. It only takes one to get out the door. So what I'm talking about, I can stay here, or I can walk out that door right into a pine box. Like Helen McElwain, you mean? Did she know about you and her husband? <laughs> know about us? She offered to pay for the wedding. Then why wasn't there one? Honey, in my business and in yours, you get ahead by knowing your customer. You better brush up. Andrew McElwain is phobic about dirt, on him or about him. And divorce is dirty. Get it? Got it. So Helen was going to be the one and only Mrs. Andrew McElwain. Mm. Until he found her bags packed and they were sitting next to Alfred Cooper's. And then there were none. Miss Troy, you could have done better. Don't lose any sleep, lady. Would you do me a favor? Would you split? All right. But thanks. You were a great help. <laughs> Glad you got lucky. Hey, you owe me one. You never seen a herd of me, okay? Don't worry. Since you've been on my tail all day, I might as well fill you in. I'm heading back to my office and spread the word there's no parking on my street. Well, nothing here except the photograph of Helen McElwain's watch. We're up to our ears in pictures of that watch. The license plate of the guy who's been tailing you? Sylvan Blunt's his name, a member of your profession. Only he just closed up his office. Left no forwarding address. Oh. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go to lunch. I'll warn the cafeteria. I'm going to go buy new dishes. My mother would faint if she saw the ones I have. The hotel name's still on them? Let up, Shaq. Later, Merrill. You want some coffee? Yeah, thanks. You know the guy Merrill was telling you about, Blunt? Mm -hmm. He is a weasel. A real hungry one. Yeah, he hasn't been more than 100 yards behind me since I saw Andrew McElwain. McElwain, you saw him? Yacht and all. How come you forgot to mention it? Lady has to have some secrets. He summoned me. Supposedly, he wanted to give me a job. Actually, he was trying to buy me away from David. Well, that is something. He's a fanatic about keeping the family name clean. He doesn't want anybody to get wind of David or me. The way things are going, no one will. I haven't been able to come up with a thing that means zip. I'm about ready to give David his money back. Hey, you, rule number one, never return money. I'd like not to for a lot of reasons, mostly because David Cooper is a terrific kid. I hate to let him down. Do you have anything else besides this? Nothing, and I must have looked at that a hundred times. Go for 101. Or go back to the scene of the crime. Hey, hey, wait a minute. What are you doing back here again? Hey, John. John, listen, you were friends with my father. If you can help us, I don't believe that he killed Helen McElwain. If there's anything you can remember about that day. I remember a lot of things, not just about that day. I remember me and Alfred, your father, was going into business together, landscaping. Then she came along, got her hooks into him. He couldn't think about anything but her after that. If he was so involved with her, why would he murder her? He thought they were going to leave here together. But he found out he was wrong. She told him just before the party. She changed her mind. How do you know that? Everyone knew. The cook heard Mr. McElwain talking about it. Mr. Pearson, I'd like to ask you one more thing. I have nothing more to say. I don't know why you're here. But don't come back. Understand? I think it's time for me to return your money and drop the case. 
No, you can't. I don't, I don't want my money back. I have nothing to implicate anybody but your father. You heard Pearson. He had a motive. He didn't do it. He... I, I know how you feel. I can respect it. But everything points to your father's guilt. Everything. I'm sorry. I didn't want it to work out this way. But I don't know what else to do. Happy birthday already. Cassie, we've seen this thing six times. And besides, if you're going to drop the case... I know, but there's something bothering me. It's all too convenient. I can't put my finger on it, but something's wrong. The only place I have to look for it is this film, and I'm going to keep looking. And so are you. I'll look tomorrow, okay? I have to wash windows. My mother's coming, remember? So you said, but you didn't say when. Neither did she. But in the paper under my stars for this week, it says a meaningful wish will come true. Mm. See that pony? What's that thing over there behind it? What thing? This thing. I never saw it before. Well, I don't know. Show me. This thing with the... It's a sundial. It is a sundial. Meryl, you divine creature. I don't get it. A sundial tells time. The only thing we really know about Helen McElwain's death is the time it happened. Now we have another timepiece. I can't explain it, but I have an idea. Rewind that film and get it over to Eddie's right away. Have him blow up every frame with that sundial in it. They should be as big as they can and get them as fast as you can. I'm going to go wash up. You all right? You look a little green around the gills. Don't ask. Last night, some prevert of a private eye decides it's time to bust into Cassie's office, and guess who was there to get clobbered? You. Right, me. And I'd be out there right now looking for the son of a gun, but Cassie had him picked up. I hope he gets the chair. I hope they fry them. I hope they stand him up and pull him. All I asked you is, are you all right? Not about the stuff. Huh? Oh, it's, uh, great. Huh? Just great. I know that, but great what? It's great, uh, classified information. I can't discuss it. Hey, I did the work I'm entitled to know. You'll have to ask Cassie about it. I just pick up and deliver. Oh, Eddie, thanks for your concern about me. It's nice to know somebody cares. All right, there's the sundial. There's the kids at the party, and the bridge is over in that direction. Bridge, bridge. Very good, very good. You know, I think I liked it better when you picked on me. You are next. That's it. Either you listen or you leave. Be quiet. 
All right. Now, as I was saying, the bridge is over there. This is where the kids are at the party. David, how long does it take to get from the bridge to where the kids were? When I was six, I think I could run from the bridge to the house in about four minutes. It took us about ten the other day. All right. The sundial reads 105. Right. right. Mrs. McElwain's watch stopped at 110. Right. David, now look, there's your father. At 105. He was on his way into the house to get the cake. And there he is coming out of the house with the cake about 120. There is no way he could have gone to the bridge, killed Mrs. McElwain, hidden the gun, gone all the way back to the house, gotten the cake and taken it out to the kids in 15 minutes. Unless he was a championship runner. My father had asthma. David, you were right. Your father was innocent. Excuse me, I need time to think. Poor kid, he looks as though he was hit by a brick. He was. Well, now we know who didn't do it. But who did? It takes about 10 minutes to get from right here to the lake. Is that a new perfume? I like it. It's really Michael, nice. Michael, there's a time and a place for everything. When? Where? Yeah, pay attention. I am. To this. OK. What are you trying to tell me now? Yes. It's Shackleford. What am I, an annex? Shack. Cassie, David Cooper isn't at home, and no one has seen him since early morning. I had a feeling you were going to say that. Thanks, Shack. I want Andrew McElwain brought in for questioning. Andrew McElwain? He could have gone to the bridge when he left the party at 12.55. So could 20 other people who were at the party, and probably 50 more who weren't even invited. Why start at the top? Because the man who tried to steal the film out of my office worked for him, not for any of those other people. McElwain had plenty of time to kill his wife, hide the gun in Cooper's room, and get back to the party by 1.20, which he did. Cassie, he also had time to go back to the house to make a phone call or take a shower or raid the refrigerator and get back to the party by 1.20. Oh. If that's all you've got, it's not enough. Not when you tangle with someone like Andrew McElwain. No one will listen to you. You mean you won't? I am listening. I just don't want to see you laughed out of town. What was his motive? Jealousy. Oh, Cassie, forget it. No way. OK, but you're on your own. I'm not going for it. Well, you will. Mr. McElwain's office. This is Cassie Holland. I'd like to speak to him, please. I'm sorry Mr. McElwain is not in his office. I have to talk to him. Did he leave a number where he can be reached? He didn't leave one, and I didn't ask. He was in a blue tiz when he walked out, and I know better than to bother him when he's in one of Please, it's important. All I know is he went to the estate to meet Mr. Cooper, and that's all I can tell you. I've been working for him. Wait a minute, what was that all about? I'll tell you later. At dinner. Call me, but hang under those. You're going to need them. Well, in profile, you look just like your father. Mr. McElwain. And your behavior is like his as well. Contemptible. How dare you call me and threaten me? I called and said I had some information that you might be interested in. Yes, I've heard that before. It invariably leads to an inept attempt at blackmail. Not this time. But what I said must have had some effect. You're here. This is private property. I've come to remove you. If I had Pearson trained to do that. Maybe the man that broke into Cassie Holland's office and attacked her secretary. I know nothing about that. Just like you know nothing about your wife's murder.
I have proof that you know a lot about it. It's all in this film. <laughs> ah, yes, the film. Interesting to think that if she'd lived, Helen would have been your stepmother. But Pearson said she changed her mind. An after... object lesson to you. If you tell a person something, and you tell it convincingly enough, not only is it believed, but the person hearing it tends to think they heard it firsthand rather than second or third. They were leaving. With you and with Brooke. <laughs> it would have made choice breakfast table reading. Titillating news heard on car radios as people were driving to work. Perfect for my detractors to dine out on. Andrew McElwain's wife and the help. But you killed her. You're telling me that you shot her. I'm admitting to what you said you already knew. <laughs> well, frankly, David, I was expecting a slightly more animated response. <laughs> like everything else, I suppose, the prize is never up to the quest for it. Why did you tell me? It's gone on too long, all this probing and questioning by Miss Holland. And Miss Holland herself, I find her very interesting. She could be useful to me. When you're found a suicide, and an easily explainable one, I intend to pursue her. Forget it, Mr. McElwain. I've decided I don't like your style after all. I'm sorry to hear that, Miss Holland, but it doesn't matter. It's as easy for me to dispose of two of you as it is to dispose of one. But what about the others? The district attorney knows that we're here. Well, I guess you could dispose of him, but then there's Sylvan Blunt. I doubt that he would hold up under questioning, so that means you'd have to get rid of him. Then there's my secretary, your secretary, whom I've spoken to. That's enough, Miss Holland. What if you did take care of all of us? You could never be sure there wasn't someone else that you didn't think of. Someone who would tell. Someone who'd bring it all out in the open. You're right, in part. But none of it will ever come out into the open. What have you got, really? Nothing. We have that film. It's enough to make a lot of people ask questions. Come on, David. We have a lot of people to talk to. I have everything I wanted. You can go on with it if you want to, but I have my father back. Let him live with who he is, what he did, and what we know. away and shot himself. The caretaker found his body over by the bridge. Well, I guess everybody got what they needed. David is assured of his father's innocence, and McElwain doesn't have to face his reputation being destroyed. It was him, huh? Would have been better if he'd had to face trial. I doubt that ever would have happened. I'm going to have a cup of coffee. You don't have to wait. You must have an awful lot to do. I do? All week long, you've been so excited about your mother coming. Oh, that. Oh, that? She called. She's decided to postpone her trip. <laughs> Till I get married. You can't get married. You work for me. I know. I told her that. She said she'd rather wait. Why make two trips? Well, don't you feel too bad? You wouldn't want her to see you looking like that anyway, would you? No. It's just as well. You're going to be busy in court testifying against Sylvan Blunt. 
And furthermore, it's her loss, Meryl. And don't you ever forget it.